Roddy goes with uh, the Mon Ultimate out now. Um, what about eight months plus nine months almost? Um, still have people on the fence saying that uh, LMU is basically like uh, or Factor Two, just uh, reskinned. So I thought let's uh, let's see if that really is the case. So what I've done, I'm going to do two uh, tests here, right? So one is going to be the uh, Ferrari uh, 488 GT3 or GTE. Um, and for this, uh, I've come into uh, Or Factor uh, 2 and come to Sebring. Um, so let me just uh, sort out the uh, engine start and let's get into the car itself. So I'm going to do like just a seat, 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 of course. <laughs> or Factor things, eh? But um, I thought what I'd do is I'd jump into this one and uh, just see kind of how similar or different both of these sims actually are right because uh, a lot of people saying that you know oh it's just a reskin there's nothing really going on uh, you know it, it's a cheap attempt really but um you know to, to create a new game so i thought well is it really so for this and to keep things uh somewhat similar right um i happen to know that uh or factor and lmu being the same platform at least right so i thought well let me just match up the force feedback profiles so my profile for the GTE in LMU is here. Let's load that in. That's now loaded. So if anyone's wondering, by the way, what force feedback settings I actually use, right, just before we uh, drive the car here, um, let me have a look at the tuning menu. So this is what I do um, in Le Mans Ultimate um, in pretty much all of my sims, right? So I have uh, the, the strength, the force feedback strength is suited to the car. And what I aim really is for anywhere from 10 to 12 newton meter peaks um, through the through the wheel, right? I'm using a Fanatec DD2 um, with a Formula V2 uh, rim. So I, you know, when, when I'm driving and I'm looking at the actual Fanatec display for testing, I aim for about 10 to 12 newton meters of absolute peak force. Average peaks about eight, eight point whatever, nine maybe. Um, but anyway, that you know that that's down to personal preference. The rest of it though, um, damping, friction, inertia, all that stuff, I have turned off because the game should be giving you um, the you know the correct uh, ffb with all things being considered um and then finally we have the interpolation filter all that does is that's just a smoothing pass this is similar to um a reconstruction filter on um on SimiCube, and you know i'm sure there's other ones as well and uh, you know i don't know what they're called exactly but basically it's just a smoothing filter just to take a little bit of sharpness out of the ffb and that you know it's a good mix between detail and um you know, feeling what the car is doing and still feeling natural. But anyway, enough about that. Let's um, let's jump into uh, the actual car. Let's let's go for a couple of laps. Let's see what this is all about. What I've done as well, by the way, I've also set the brake settings pretty much the same as they are in um, LMU and in this game. So the actual brake pedal. Uh, the brake force um, should be should be the same. So let's see how these actually drive. Yeah, I mean, the FFB and R Factor Two is uh, it's great, isn't it? We're gonna do um, we're gonna do a P two as well, probably around Spa or something, just to compare the two, but. GTEs around Sebring and then maybe uh, the P2 around uh, maybe around Spa I think will be a good comparison yeah I mean straight away like I mean there, there is a there is a similarity there but LMU is certainly more refined in the FFB it just feels a little bit different um, better of course it just feels like you know and in terms of the the actual the graphics, the colour, the post-processing, like an LMU, it's miles ahead. Like, this looks quite flat. It's still okay, like, just looks a bit flat. But still, still good, like, it's not, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad or anything like that. Yeah, the FFB in this is really, really good, like.
One thing I don't really like here is that um, I can't really hear the tires too much or other wind, like wind effects that you get an LMU, which just seems a bit lacking in this. Oops, don't change for you when you're driving, Gary. That was silly. How many extra cameras do we have? Those look quite cool, though. Yeah, let's get back in the car. We'll do we'll do another uh, two laps, and then we'll look at the replay and kind of see what's like visually. But I mean, visually, I can tell you now, like already looks uh, beneath what LMU is. But um, uh, you, you know, you're going to expect that. Sound is the same, though. Obviously, I mean, it's the same car, isn't it? But. There's definitely more. There's definitely more sound going on in LMU, in fact. Like, there's more. There's more happening. Like, this just sounds. Like, the engine sound is the same, but the overall sound palette. That's the right word. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a sound engineer, but it just seems flop like a person. Yeah, you know what this feels like, uh, and I don't mean disrespect to the guys at Studio 397 here, but it's like, you know, I, I, I've been following Or Factor 2 for a while, and um, it's almost like the DLC came out, like this car came out with GTE or an endurance pack, I think it was, and um, the, it's almost like, let's get the content out, but I don't know, it's just messy, like, it's just not... It's not done as best as it could be, I don't think. Like when you look at LMU now, I mean, it's 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 better. Like it's a it's a good step ahead. And I wonder, like, why could that not have been like this? You know, even silly things like sound and just overall polish. In my opinion, I noticed as well when I um, turned the, the steering wheel past a certain angle, and I can feel like a kind of graininess um, in the FFB. Um. Actually, I do remember that being an RF2 car. Yeah, I can feel it right there. It's like this grainy kind of pushback. It's still great, though. Like, I mean, the, the FFB still feels really detailed. But, um, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's just not as um, smooth or refined as it is in LMU. Like, LMU still feels nice and sharp, similar to this but way more refined without the graininess. Yeah, it's like, it's difficult to feel or hear the lockup. It's almost like the tire sound is a little bit too, too subdued. I'm gonna lock it up here and just see. Like, um, I'll try to lock it up. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Big, big lock up, and uh, yeah, we have the flat spots, of course. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um. Let's have a look back at that then. So, yeah, you know, felt really good. Um, you know, like I say, slow speed. Actually, even now, my steering wheel. I'm not touching that. And look, the steering wheel is moving. Look, steering wheel is moving. I remember this now with our Factor 2. It was a weird thing where if I went that way, the steering wheel would be grand, right? But if I went uh, clockwise, the steering wheel wants to go back. This is, I remember this now in R-Factor 2. This is the reason why I stopped playing the game, because of all this random force feedback crap. Um, I must actually try that in LMU. I don't think it's there. But, um, yeah, it's in R-Factor 2. Again, it, it, it's just shit like this is why, you know, 
it prevents people from picking up the game. I mean, prevented me from picking up the game and actually giving it a proper go. Um, like I, I did buy loads of content for it. Like I bought the um, I have the whole endurance pack. I bought the Formula E's and any track that came out. But I never got into it because of this. Like it's just, it's just little things. It's just not, it's not finished as a, as a final product. Like there's flashes of brilliance in it. Like this car feels really good to drive. It, all right, it's not. 100% of what they could do I'm sure and and that's the problem with R Factor 2 for me it's like it, it, it's a bit and almost enough of everything um, you know brilliant engine brilliant FFB lots of potential but just not executed the way it should be and then other little bugs and I remember as well I had to at one point get into the uh, into the game files to edit the, the force feedback profile as well because um remember in this if you hit a wall or you hit like a curb it would like almost take the steering wheel off your hands like i mean it was just ridiculous um but yeah anyway let's um let's fire this one up in uh sebring in lmu uh same car same track and um, i'm going to run the same ffb profile of course um and let's let's compare all right guys so here you are then in uh, le mans ultimate and um Again, just to keep things consistent, so there's the Ferrari uh, 488 uh, GT Evo profile from Le Mans Ultimate. So let's just um, uh, load that in and just while I'm here, I'm going to save that to the current card I've selected as well, just to just to get that out of the way. So anyway, um, here we are in game. Um, I've done the setup changes already. So we are um, 30 liters of fuel. Um, yeah, the, the I mean the usual the usual stuff. Uh, you know, other than that standard setup um so let us uh go and do a couple of laps on this um and see um what the differences is uh versus the um the sebring run we done in or factor two right so immediately and you don't need me to point this out right but immediately um there's a lot more depth to uh the color palette right so if we let's actually look outside of the car uh, if we can't, so I mean, just seems like the, there's more. I mean, the colors are just better. They're they're richer. You've got a shine on the car that just you know grabs your attention. And then even inside the car, the the dashboard, the lights inside the car, the, the interior graphics, everything is just everything is just better. You know. Um, and then even looking at the track, like the depth of field uh, out into the distance, the textures on the road, uh, just, yeah, they're just all noticeably better, it seems. But um, anyway, let's uh, let's get into a couple of laps and see what it actually drives like. <laughs> Instant force feedback, man. Yeah, this is what it's all about. Like, I mean, this is why LMU is, uh, is so good. Like, the feedback... And the amount of detail is absolutely brilliant. Um, and again, I must remember that LMU does the whole call tire thing, so that's probably why I almost lost it there. But yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is not like Or Factor Two, uh, in my opinion. The sound is just deeper. Yeah, just better. Just better all around. And you can hear like the other noise is like the chassis just bouncing around like the there's like stones hitting the chassis and that I can hear the tire a little bit more. It's just more ambient noise. I'll be quiet so you might be able to hear it. You can hear it there, I think. Your tires are cold, watch out. Yeah, man, this is. This is fucking next level. This is next level shit, man. Like... This is not R-Factor 2. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. 
it was spawned from Or Factor 2. But it's like then they crossbred it with uh, people that thought, right, we're going to finish this. We've got one way to do it, and that's the right way to do it. And there is no other way to do it. And this is what they produced. It's like the brilliance of Or Factor 2, but up a few levels. This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Driving a little bit sloppy, but I'm kind of just doing it to, I guess, showcase the um, the detail and the feedback. Like when you're driving at and above that limit, I racing guys take note. This is what a car should actually feel like. I've never driven a GT3 specifically or a GTE, right? But I, I know how, you know, I've, I've had my own fair share of uh, on a private road, of course. Uh, and on track as well. I mean, but it's just like, you know, when, when you compare this then to like War Factor 2 and people are saying like it's it's a reskin. I mean, it just isn't. It really isn't. Yeah, this is just brilliant. A world apart. Perfect force feedback. Detailed. None of the crap in the signal. And, um, you know, that, that, that was a problem that... Uh, or factor two had just the, the force feedback signal just contained a lot of noise, I guess, if you want to call it that. It just, you know, just wasn't clean. Okay, I'm overdriving now, right? Just, we'll calm down, we'll get one lap in, and then um, we'll jump into the, uh, the Orca at Spa and see how that compares the car with a bit of downforce on it. But, uh, I mean, the sound of this... Like how it looks, how it sounds, the ambience, the, just the visuals alone are a step above, but it's more than just that. It's way more than just visuals. Yeah, I mean, this is, like, without question, the best um, simulator that uh, I've driven. Like, it's many cuts above it's not even slightly above it's like way above anything else out there no people really need to look past the um, motorsport game hatred thing and you know I was one of them I have to say you know for a while but you know it's a different ship now different people there and you know to keep the hatred is just denying yourself like this gem of the game like all right we'll, we'll get this lap in we'll keep this lap clean and then um does all the right things the right way and even like the interior uh, like textures and stuff like that is just way above all right not the best lap but um 201.87 good lap that's your best in the session Yeah, the level of detail in um, the force feedback and how the car interacts with the road as well. Like, not, not just the curves, but the actual bumps in the road. Like, you don't just feel it, but you can actually... You know, the car reacts to it. And that's what makes this very unique. 
it's obvious what the car is doing at all times because you can feel it, you can see it, you can you can even hear it. That's one thing you couldn't really do in Or Factor. Like back to what I'm saying again, like that kind of ambient noise. Yeah, it's just way better, like. I think, luckily, I don't think I've locked the wheels yet, but um, what I will at the end of this lap, um, we'll do a bit of a lock-up and just kind of see um, how we can tell we're doing a lock-up, whether it's through sound, whether it's through anything other obvious thing, but in our factor 2, like, everything else was very quiet, apart from the car engine uh, sound. Oops, a bit wide. That's probably ruined that lap. Yeah, a bit of a sloppy lap. Yeah, I mean, look, even the reflection off the back of the car in the sunlight, I mean, yeah, brilliant stuff, man. Yeah, shit lap, it, well. <laughs> right, let's do a lock up. Today. Okay, very obvious. <laughs> we can hear the tyre, right? <laughs> and we can feel the flat spot now. Yeah, man, absolutely. Just, uh... yeah, this is, uh... we're not comparing this to R Factor 2. Like, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm certainly not. Like, if you were to give me a choice between this and R Factor 2, and you were to say, oh, look, go, on, go to Sebring, go on to Ferrari. Um, and, and look, no weird shit with the steering wheel. Doesn't want to go back the other way. Doesn't want to go back the other way. And then if I go the opposite way, where are we? Yeah, steering wheel is all good. I seem to fix that, whatever it was, in, um, in LMU, like, so we don't have the steering wheel wanting to uh, go back to center. Um, the way I had before. Actually, and yeah, for anyone unfamiliar, like R Factor 2 had this weird thing, and we'll see it when we take the Orca as well. Um, let me jump in there. So, R Factor 2 has this weird thing where the steering wheel, when you go to the right, you get this kind of rainy feeling, and then the steering wheel wants to like automatically come back to the left on, well, on my fan attack at least. I'm assuming it should be the same for most, um, most wheel bases because ultimately it's a signal going to the USB port, so. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? But I mean, look at this. Look at the visuals. Look at the car over the curbing. Just absolutely everything you can feel. The textures of the car body as well are just... I mean, look, look at the shine. Look at the shine. Just like... Um, oh man, this is brilliant. I never thought I'd actually enjoy looking at me losing control, but, uh... Yeah, this is, uh... This is different league, guys. This is, uh... Way above. Way different than R-Factor 2. It's way different than anything on the market. Like, and I have all of the simulators. I have, you know, countless hours in, um, ACC. Like, I've got a couple of thousand, I think. Um, I've done lots of hours in AMS2 and recently Race Room. And or factor, by the way. Um, I racing, throw that in there too. Still have I racing, but um, I have to say it, it's becoming a bit more difficult for me to justify the I racing membership, if I'm honest, because um, like while I racing has a lot more choice, um, a lot more cars. I'm kind of more into like I'd rather like a, a focused competition system, right? Where you know we've got. Same type of thing going on, and let's take LMU, like it's multi-class uh, world endurance. We have hypercars, GTE, LMP, and then going forward, we're going to have GT3 and hyper mainly on the grid as well, right? So it's focused. We have the same amount of tracks. Everyone is, you know, 
got the same spec sheet to work with basically where i find with i racing i mean and, and and this is a me problem by the way right but i find with i racing like it you know week to week it could be a track that i'm not familiar with um or i might decide i want to go to do you know drive a car that i'm not comfortable with or or don't understand and again it's a me problem right but my point is is that because lme are able to focus i think on limited amount of tracks limited amount of cars i think that's actually going to be to its benefit i mean look what happened to acc i mean that you know took off um like acc would have like you know two to maybe four thousand users uh, at any one point in time where if you compare that like with mm. iRacing um, I think what are we like 17,000 users I think um, let me check in fact actually no I won't, I won't, I won't bother but I think, I think it's about 17,000 um, users uh, usually at any one time um, certainly when, I, when I've been playing it's been you know 15 to 17,000 so if you can imagine then ACC is getting like a third of that iRacing um Find a player base uh, logging on at any one time then what could lmu do once they iron out a couple of you know little bugs and stuff that they have and they're fairly minor i think like i mean the the game crashes have become way less frequent for me since i've taken off the overclocks um and, I, and by the way it wasn't an overclock i ran it was an auto overclock from my asus motherboard so um yeah like i say since i've taken that off and gone back to like intel standard spec on my cpu um i haven't had any any i don't think i've had any crashes in fact since then but um your mileage might vary of course anyway enough talk let's go and get the orica um 07 uh we'll go and we'll do uh spa francochon and then we'll uh see what that feels like and then do the same in lmu we'll take the orica to the spa as well and drive them back to back and see what the see what the differences are Right guys, here we are, but I'm back uh, in Or Factor 2, this time for the Orica 07, the LMP2. Uh, so what I'm going to do, um, just so everyone knows the uh, change I'm making, I'm just taking off the camber, uh, making sure the tyre pressures are low or lowest. Um, you know, just things you do, I guess, in, in, in this game. And if I remember correctly, in LMU I had this around 73%, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, the, the brake duct blanking, I will give it one click and we'll leave it at that. The only other thing we're going to make um, is a uh, fuel adjustment. So that is, where is that? Uh, yeah. So uh, with, with the with the Ferrari, we're going to go with, uh, I don't know, let's go with 40 litres. Let's go with 50 litres, whatever. We probably won't use the whole 50 litres, but just keeping okay, things consistent. Cool. And um, actually with this as well, let me just show you the profile I'm going to run, so there's the Orica M07, so this is what I use uh, in LMU for my P2 car. Um, and as you can see, the actual FFB settings are all the same. The only difference is the strength is kicked up a little bit, and I have a different uh, uh, LED profile, obviously. But uh, yeah, whatever, it's, it's yeah, you, you get the point. So um, anyway, back in the car, and let us uh, start this up and get going. Um, so where are we? Right, ignition, start, and seat, 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 and let us uh, just move the seat up a tiny bit. Yeah, this is kind of where I have my seat. Okay, I cannot turn the car out of garage. I don't know if I hit the car there. Let me just go back, and uh, we'll go a second time. Disabled. Ignition, start. I have one of the um, stream decks. Uh, set up for our factor 2 in LMU. It's all on the wheel, of course. Now, see, when I hold the wheel like this, right, and if I let go, I'm getting a... There's a crazy vibration coming through the wheelbase here. And now when I... When we go straight, the vibration is gone. When I turn this way, it's back. When I turn to the left, there's no vibration. When I turn to the right, there is a vibration. And so, yeah, this... Something about our factor 2 just never worked... Um, yeah, I've had this problem for a while, but anyway, um, let us have a look uh, outside of the car then. Um, well, actually, before we do, let's look inside the car, right? Inside the car looks, uh, oh, wait to say it, it looks awful, uh, really. I mean, the steering wheel is shit looking. Um, let's have a look inside. I don't think just an interior camera view. 
Uh, no, there doesn't seem to be. But okay, but I mean, look, look, look at the steering wheel. I mean, compared to uh, LMU, I'm pretty sure LMU is a lot better than this. Um, outside of the car, let us just uh, back off a little. Yeah, I mean, outside of the car looks pretty okay. Uh, yeah, it's pretty decent. Like, I mean, what you'd expect. I don't think the textures are as good uh, from what I remember in in LMU, but but uh, yeah, okay, let, let's rock and roll then. Yeah, the same again. Like, there's no depth to the to the sound. Yeah, like the, the runoff on the downshifts is, yeah, that's nice. Like it's not, it's not terrible. Anyway, let's get into the car and actually get driving this properly. And yeah, let's go for it. A couple of laps and see what this is like around Spa. The LEDs, by the way, won't match because I'm I'm running the LMU profile, which the LEDs on this steering wheel, um, I can tell you straight off, they're they're different because I'm. Um, I know in um, LMU they they have blue lights on the yeah I mean there's similarities here but um, and I mean look at the trees and the distance there as well I mean they're just uh, even straight ahead I mean the Graphically, it just feels like a lot flatter than... Like, look at the trees in the distance up here. Like, it just feels graphically um, just a good bit flatter than um, LMU. Like, just not as... I don't know, it's more than just the colour tones. It's just... It's a bit of everything. Even the track detail is just not the same, and... Yeah. Yeah, even the sound of this is just not as... It doesn't have the level of depth like the, you know. difficult to know when to change gear on this because um the even the like if i ignore my fanatec wheel and look even at the at the in-game wheel it's like the led profile on it is um like we've got green we've got orange and it goes red but when it goes red there's still a chunk of rpm still to go so it's a bit confusing in that sense Strangely enough, I yeah, yeah, it's just you know, I am um, I was never a big fan of R Factor 2. Um, and since getting LMU and getting into LMU like a bit more recently, like I have got into R Factor 2 a little, like for some older Formula One cars and just you know, tracks and stuff that are not in LMU, but. To say that they're like, you know, to say that LMU is like or factor 2.5 is just not accurate. Oh, I don't think it's um, there's too much that's different. It's almost like a an or factor tree. Like I mean, it's a complete step above. The only difference, of course, is that um, it has a. Uh, You know, I mean, like, like people say, the only difference is that it, it's like a reskin for the World Insurance Championship and whatever. But, you know, I, I can see similarities in some of the graphic renders, like on how it's done. Like, it, you kind of have this, like, um, layer above some of it. It's difficult to explain, but 
I have to say, like everything else, that's where the similarities appear to stop. Like, I mean, but we'll know more when we get into the LMU uh, Orica and just see. But from what I remember, and I've just driven an Orica race about an hour ago um, online, um, this is a bit different. A little bit different, in fact. But like I say, the, the force feedback is still as detailed. It's still very, very good. It just feels a little bit unrefined. But still, as I say, you know, you... And I have this torn here. I have this crazy vibration through the wheel, like... And I know it's just because of the game itself. Like, if I quit the game and come back into it, the... Um, that vibration will disappear. It happens randomly, and the only way around it is to quit the game, come back in, and everything kind of resets. You know, it's it, it's little things like this that um, prevented this game, I think, from realizing its potential, you know? Like, decent title, but when you look at the content it has, the physics engine that it's sitting on top of, um, all of that to, you know, wind up where it has, it's just uh, unforgivable in my opinion, but, you know, whatever about that. Yeah, like it's this weird kind of feeling through the steering wheel like when I go to turn past a certain angle like it just gets really grainy and really weird yeah okay um, I turn the wheel the driver's hands look a bit disproportionate to the steering wheel but ah whatever like I'm nitpicking now but I mean looking around the car the rest of the car um, it just yeah, it's a lot flatter, like, I mean, it's it's not terrible, but certainly not, you know. Let's have a look at, um, let's have a look at the couple of laps that we've done. Um, like I say, you know, there is, there is some content that, you know, Studio 397 have released for this, like the British touring cars and so on, that is actually really, really fun. But, um, you know, so I'm not saying that this as a sim is, uh, to be discarded, like, I mean, it, 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 it it's still a good driving experience the only thing i don't like is this uh weird shit. i mean look look at this right if i let go of the wheel all right th this is just a, a north factor 2 thing for some reason um don't know why but uh if i go the other way look if i go the other way there, there's, there's nothing there's no there's no um there's no vibration it's like it's like a pulse going through the through the wheelbase it's uh it's quite weird but if, as soon as i go this way look and i release it just wants to yeah like it's you can see yourself my steering wheel is just not behaving um you know but ah whatever but the car itself um you know drives pretty well there, there's definitely like a lot of uh, information in the steering wheel and um, but like i say from what i remember the sounds the graphics like everything about it is just um a lot flatter as you'd expect so, um, you know, so far, uh, the R Factor 2.5 thing or the R Factor 2 reskin, um, it's not really, not really landing with me, if I'm honest. But um, let, let's jump into um, LMU, into the Orca. We'll jump to Spa and uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll do a couple of laps. Uh, similar setup, of course. And uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see any differences that are there. All right, guys, here we are then in... Uh, LMU in the Orica, and again, just to keep things consistent, um, the loaded profile, it's the Orica 07, this one here, and again, there's the tuning menu just to you know, keep everything uh, consistent uh, again, because, um, yeah, I think it's important doing these things that we are uh, doing like for like. So anyway, same thing, uh, regular setup, um, I've adjusted uh, the, the fuel and, you know, the same adjustments basically that uh, we're doing in all these tests um, and again just getting a feel for any graininess really and uh, there's nothing I mean it, it, it all feels 
it all feels fine. Um, one obvious thing you're going to notice is the steering wheel of this compared to uh, Or Factor. Exit looks clear. Um, it's just comical, to be honest with you. Your brakes are cold. Be careful. Um, and again, it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying in terms of, um, you know, the I won't say unfinished, but just not meeting its potential. Or Factor Two, just because of silly little things where changes and stuff should have been made but weren't made, um, or enhancements. But, um, and look at the shine. Shines are really, really cool there. Let me just change one thing. I think um, I had my crew chief running. And let me just... Uh, radio check. Spot a radio check. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Gary. We need to watch these track limits. Anyway, let's uh, let's crack on with um, a couple of laps. But already, I mean, you can see that the uh, like the the interior of the car, the graphics, the the shine um, off the cars, kind of front end, the wheel housings, and uh, I mean, the, I mean, the most obvious is going to be the steering wheel. I mean, look at the detail on the wheel compared to um, the other or factor version. I mean, ridiculous, like. Force feedback in this game is absolutely instant. Goes a little bit lighter as the downforce comes off. It's more pronounced in this game for sure. And look at the look at the trees actually. Let me just go slow here. Um look I mean look look at the depth. Let me just take the camera off, or the camera, the mirror. Look at the depth of the the actual tree textures just everything just feels richer deeper um yeah just better in every way and you can see the texture on the road here as well the sound yeah it's just much deeper sound we can hear like the the ambience, like the, the car scraping the ground a lot more, we can hear the wind, we can hear just enough of what we can, what we need. I'm going to turn off Crew Chief, in fact, because it's given me the um, DRS warning bells. Right, let's go for it. Listen to the sound, the grunt. Yeah, this is uh This feels really, really good. I feel the understeer more, it feels more natural on the front suspension or just the front is it's a bit of life to it put it that way a bit more so than or factor if i'm honest it does feel a bit different as well i mean i wouldn't say it's an exa uh, exact uh, carbon copy i haven't driven the lmp2 here uh, at Spa in a good while, so I'm not going to go nuts completely. Yeah, you can feel the car, the, the tyre almost just scrubbing across with a hint of understeer here and there. Just sometimes, like at the slow speed, it's just set up to be a bit understeer, you just... And then, yeah, the, the aero balance is oversteer, the mechanical balance appears to be slightly understeer. But it's crazy, like, how... I can feel that immediately. I mean, look at the graphics. sound is uh is way better in um Le Mans Ultimate.
look at the grandstand here. Just graphically, I mean, it's way better from a physics perspective. Um, the, the force feedback is just, again, it, it, it's taken all the noise and crap out of the signal um, and just gives you that pure, raw information. I mean, you can feel what's going on in terms of, like, you know, the, the curb interaction, the slide, when you start to get a bit light on the front with the understeer, you can feel it. When it starts to go at the back, you can feel the steer and get lighter and want to swap directions. It's, um, yeah, it just does everything really well. I mean, and it feels like driving a car, like it really does. I mean, I've never driven an LMP, of course, but I got the limit, like the front, when the front starts to like, the best way I can describe it is like when the front starts to roll over its own tire, and I know it doesn't always happen, right, but it's, it's that feeling at the front end when it just kind of goes above that limit of grip. And then the usual then when the front grips up and the back then starts to skate away. So like the old, um, you know, oversteer induced by understeer really, because the front regains its grip and the back then says, right, I'm not ready. And it starts to want to break away. Similar to here, exactly like there. <laughs> it's crazy, man, how I can feel it as it's happening, like, this is, uh, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. And by the way, in these tests, I am driving a bit above my usual uh, limit, by the way, because, um, you know, we want to kind of see kind of how the car actually behaves and feels in, you know, on the edge of the of the grip curve, you know, that's that's really what this is all about. All right, let's try and get one half respectable lap in. Got a little bit of flat spotting from that spin, but uh, we should be okay. I can feel a bit of vibration from the flat spots, but again, that's a me problem. Take that one a bit gentler, a bit more gradual on the turning. But yeah, I mean, you can see straight away, like, just the um, the level of detail and refinedness that this game actually has. Yeah, what we'll do, um, let's try a big lock-up and let's see if we can get those audio clues. Yeah, again, very obvious when you have a lock-up and also you can feel the, um, through the tyre now, uh, or through the, through the steering wheel like that, that lock-up. And interestingly, I don't know if you can see it outside of the car, but you can actually see the, um, the damage on the wheel, uh, is there any way of getting that kind of close up? I don't, right oh, there, no, I don't think so. I don't think there's a way of getting that close up. Um, but yeah, we, we have the, 
lot of physical damage on the tire as well from that uh, from that wheel lock. Let me see. Is there a way of? Ah, yeah, we'll see it from here, right? Ah, look, there we go. There you go. Look at the uh, both of those tires with uh, flat spot damage. Yeah, pretty cool. And the rear tire, the rear tire has it as well. In fact, let's just reverse the thing a bit. Yeah, if you look at the lower tire there in the in the wheel well, and the upper tire, the upper tire has a bit of damage again on a different uh, area of the wheel. So goes to show you like that uh, the wheels are physical things um, in this game. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Anyway, let's return to the garage. So, yeah, I mean, I've been uh, kind of hitting LMU the last uh, couple of weeks. Just everything is just up a level um, in that game at the moment. Um, it just looks great, sounds great, drives fantastic. Um, and we don't have, I mean, look at the steering wheel. We don't have the same shit of R-Factor 2 where the wheel is doing this weird thing. Um, it's all good. It's all you know, perfect, so I'm happy. Um, I mean, yeah, like, people saying that this is, like, a reskin of Or Factor. No, I don't see it. I really don't see it. I can see the similarities, like, it's built on the same engine, but, um, no, when you factor in, like, and, and so, let, let's put aside the graphics and the force feedback and the sound and the overall driving, right? Because it, it, it's obvious to anyone with um, a functioning brain that uh, you know, there's a big difference. Um, don't know why I was going slow here. But what else this game has going for it, right, is... And I, I've been quite vocal about this. When when a game is trying to carve out a niche uh, for itself, um, it really needs to focus on... Okay, how, how do I... How do I build a player base firstly and how do I keep them engaged and one thing that sim racers like more than anything else is uh, competition uh, we're a competitive bunch um, even the casual ones love the, the wheel to wheel and when I say competitive I'm not I'm not that, that's not exclusively for eSport aliens or anything right just anyone like I mean like over the last month or you know, I, like any race I've been involved in, I've literally done maybe 10 or 15 minute warm up and I'm into the grid. I'm, I'm practicing, I'm racing. I'm not I'm not grinding out anymore. And I'm having some brilliant races. Um, I'm still competitive. I still want to win the thing. I still want to battle for position. Um, that doesn't change. You know, so this, this thing about the competitive um, online arena area being reserved for esports esporters it's just not true um like if you're a casual racer you can come on have a great bit of fun uh if you have any competitive blood in your body um the benefits of a focus series like this is actually good for you because you know and, and think about it because it sounds counterintuitive but if you're limited on time and you have you know one of three classes of cars let's say you prefer the lmps or or a GTE or the upcoming GT3s um, and you've got like what seven eight tracks at most at the moment um, you could in theory get quite good at each of those and be competitive and you know be able to put in some solid lap times and there's loads of people exactly like that that you know e even even people in the midfield will have great battles I even had great battles in the midfield in some of my um, splits because I'm at the point now where I'm getting dumped into split one but i'm probably midfield in split one i'm not i'm certainly not good enough to to win against some of those boys but you get the idea there's something for everybody right so where a game like this shines is because it's got a limited um, amount of uh i won't say limited content it's the content that it aims at it's the it's the whole genre that it's aiming at it's it's that world endurance championship here we have hypercars lmps gtes that's what you're getting it focuses the entire player base then on that so you know us being a competitive bunch 
are like, oh, well, I'm going to take the LMP and what, what is a good lap on Spa? What is a good lap on Sebring and whatever? And I'm going to get close to that. And if I'm within a second or two seconds of the absolute aliens, then I'm going to have a good fight. I'm going to go on. I'm going to race. I'm going to, going to get involved. This is, this is all cool. Um, alternatively, you pick up something like a Seto Corsa, um, where it's more of a driving sim than it is a racing sim. It's race cars in it, but it's like Gran Turismo, Forza. Um, those games are about driving different cars, not necessarily about focused racing competition. And I think that's what Le Mans Ultimate is. It, it's it's doing what it, it's doing what ACC done. Um, ACC had a focus that was GT3s, and Le Mans Ultimate is going to do the same thing. And you know, in terms of the actual finished product, which is what we're talking about here, comparing this to the old Or Factor, this is like not even comparable. It's miles ahead. Like, let's have a look at that again. So this was the understeer induced oversteer and I kind of yanked the wheel just to show the point. And let's see, can you see the car's actual attitude in the corner change? There we go. Let's have a look at that in slow-mo. There, right there. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a certain point at where the, the rear of the car pivots around the center axis lines up with the front wheels which causes the need for opposite lock right uh which is right there in fact it, it's it's the ideal camera angle for it right there we go like it, it, it's pivoted around if i play that at normal speed you, you'll notice that the rear will will slide and it, it's right at that point watch closely It's exactly how the car would behave. There's the front regaining grip. There's the rear asking. Yeah, I mean, the front asking too much of the rear once it regains grip. And if we just go back just a tiny bit beforehand, wait and you see the steering angle on the front tire. It, it, it's pushing very slightly. And then all of a sudden that grip gets regained. Push, 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 push. There's the grips up. Back of it comes round. Beautiful. Not beautiful in the middle of a race, mind you, but uh, you get the idea. Like, I mean, it's it's another example of the simulator doing it the correct way. Like, you know, it, it's oh, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, I mean, the the, the sound, the physics, the force feedback. The, even the depth of field. Let, let me just go back there. Like look, look in the background. Like that forest. Just the the entire forest in the background. You've got cars ploughing through here, uh, through Blanchemont. I mean, you can imagine a full grid. And if we had a bit of rain, I mean, just yeah, just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and as I said, the depth of sound is just way more and the onboard graphics yeah it's just way better like see the shine off the, the hood of the car the bonnet sparky sparky we're running a low right height it seems so <laughs> Yeah, honestly, man. Or factor 2.5. Ah, I don't think so. And even if I... Making this video, I kind of wanted to think so, because at least then we'd have something cool to compare, and oh, where's the future of LMU, because it's like Or factor 2, and... But it isn't. It just isn't. It even drives differently, in my opinion. Like, um... It's a bit of a similarity... But it's not it's not a huge amount. Like it, it's it's different it's different enough to be classed as a, its own standalone title, in my opinion. Um You know, and I have to say the biggest uh the biggest kind of proof of that, if you like, is I was never an Or Factor two uh supporter. 
for the reasons that we've seen in this video. You know, the weird shit with the steering wheel, the too much noise through the steering wheel, like as well, if you hit a curb, you hit a bump or whatever, like the boom, you know. Um, where this just takes all of that out of it completely and gives you the car and what the car is doing. And, you know, it, it's almost like the perfect force feedback for me. Um, but I think about how you could make it better. I'd probably struggle a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd struggle. I mean, it's, it's not missing anything. It's not missing anything. Um, it doesn't do anything bad. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it's... Perfect sim, maybe? I don't know. Um, anyway, guys, I'll leave this one here. Um, yeah, you've seen it yourself. You've seen the differences back-to-back -back in two car classes at the same tracks. And um, look... For me, driving it, the difference was quite large, I have to say. Quite large. There we have the lockup. But, um, yeah, and I think, I hope in the video as well that uh, it, it's it's going to be it's gonna be the same. Uh, you know, if it comes across in the video, the differences that I could feel, then brilliant. And um, it, it will hopefully prove to people that this is actually... You know, it, it may share the same engine as Or Factor 2, but uh, I think that's where the similarities kind of stop um, beyond that. You know, the graphics are way ahead. The sound is much, much better. The force feedback, you know, appears to be completely revamped. Uh, how the force feedback communicates to you as a driver is completely different. Um, the level of grip at certain points within the grip circle as you're driving um, is just way, way more communicative and instant in an LMU and maybe that's because they've taken out all the other crap I don't know but um LMU is just it, it, it's a cut above it, it, it's old predecessor or factor two if we want to call it a predecessor personally I think it well yeah I mean let's call it a predecessor it's not even the same game to be honest but if you want to call it the predecessor let's do it but um it's streets ahead of that and streets ahead of any other sim out there at the moment by by quite a stretch I have to say um, and I'm not being a fanboy here. Like I, I, I have an eye racing sub that it pisses all over eye racing, in in the physics and force feedback department. It's not even close. Um, I mean, consider like eye racing boys get a sub, um, every month. They should be way ahead of anything else. But whatever, we'll park that thought. Um, in terms of ACC and AMS2, I mean, both games are very, very dear to my heart. Um, like if you look at my channel, in fact, here it's mainly AMS2 content. Because I love it so much, I think the um, I think the driving and the force feedback on AMS2 was was brilliant, and the choice of cars are superb. But um, if I was to if I was to bet on what's going to be the next big title, I think it will be LMU because it's more focused and it's going to be more focused on online competition. I think that's where this is going to head. Um, it worked for ACC. The problem is when you have such a large choice of cars. Like, like AMS2 and, and even Racerun. Oh, that's a cool view. But uh, anyway, when you have such a large choice of cars, large choice of tracks, it's difficult to get people to focus on one and say, right, we're all going to look at, let's say, the 80s F1 car in AMS2. And we're going to focus on these six tracks. And what that does is that gets you a, a player base, a concentrated player base, where people can actually go online, compete, race, all the usual stuff, right? But the title like AMS2 has so much content, so many different tracks. It's <clears throat> that upside is actually its downfall, um, because you know you have like, like what have you got like 700 players, 800 players online, and they're all playing everything from the old Fiat Uno cars to the F1 cars. To, you know, there's just so much going on and so many tracks and so. It's just difficult to focus the thing. Focus your player base. That that's the message. Focus the player base. The players will come because what do we do? We love to compete. Um and LMU is gonna deliver us just that. Anyway guys, enough enough of the waffle. Um hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight um as to the differences that I've seen between the two sims, if you have the two sims as well. I'd love to hear if you agree or not. Uh let me know if I'm missing anything in North Factor 2, because that is a sim I actually want to give a bit of time to. Um but like you're saying the problems I was having with the wheel and 
yeah, let me know. Let me know, guys, if I'm, if I'm doing something wrong or whatever. But, uh, yeah, anyway, look, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, if you're on the fence, if you're an LM2, LMU, uh, fence hopper, uh, where you're thinking, oh, I'm hearing good stuff about LMU, but I don't know about Motorsport Games' future and Studio 397, this and whatever. Just don't worry about it. The game is brilliant. They've made some necessary cost cuts, um, like any business has to do. And, um, yeah, this game is uh, is top class. So, yeah, give it a go, guys. Um, but, yeah, leave it there. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.